Oh my goodness, he is covered in bugs. During the really frigid winter storm that we had, I discovered that one of our cockerels was not doing so well. I thought for sure I was going to be burying him this morning. But he is actually up and eating and drinking. What a miracle. A little bit of drama. All the chickens were really going at him and I didn't feel comfortable leaving him out here like that. We're actually experimenting with tapping our trees a little bit earlier this year. Oh, he don't like boots. Oh, Ole. Come on, Ole. He likes to be cute. <laughs> no day would be complete without some chicken drama. I found him outside with bloodied feet and legs. So we have lost another hen to a hawk, and now we are down to 16 chickens for our winter flock. So the little chicken Finn that I had brought inside during the winter storm and then I recently brought back inside because the chickens were pecking at his feet. I just Shit. found him outside looking like he was dead, laying in the compost pile all wet and hypothermic. Oh, I am just beyond frustrated. Uni and Nonami have started fighting. Been fighting all day. Come on. Oni. Yeah, no, no fighting. Some days are just like this where it's just everything all at once. To do something today I don't want to do. I did go ahead and treat the entire flock. I should have went and got Glenn to help me do it, but I didn't. Thought I could do it myself. We never had problems with mites before. If they get a bad case of them, as we can see, it's gonna kill them. I feel so bad for my chickens. What is this? Are you bloody? Is somebody pecking you again? Finn is doing really well. We're gonna be giving them their final treatment. Today is Finn's big day. I'm going to be bringing him back outside. There you go, buddy. You ready to go to bed? What's funny about Uni is when he's with the flock, he acts like he doesn't want to be with the flock. He doesn't know what he wants. That is definitely not wheat. Hey, Uni. So we're moving Uni's coop <laughs> to the other side of the fence. Uni will love you for moving his house. You ain't gonna do nothing, Uni. Behave yourself. We got one of the wall feeders. We're gonna go ahead and install that today. Uni, eat it! <laughs> We're getting to work on setting up our bachelor pad area for our roosters. I don't see that I'm going to be able to let Uni ever back in here with him. Uni! And there was a Cooper's hawk on Uni. Had killed him and was eating him. It just won't be the same without him anymore. He was the first chicken we ever hatched on our homestead. He was my best friend. I'm gonna miss him so much. Uni was the one that kind of taught me not to be quite so afraid of roosters and because of Uni started to kind of fall in love with roosters and kind of prefer them. Come on Uni. Sorry, Oni. Don't look at me. Good night, Oni. Goodbye, Oni. You know, there were times where I thought I didn't want to let Oni out and run around because it was too dangerous. Oni's coop.
So there was a risk I took. I didn't want him to be miserable. Come on, Finn. Here. You want one of his snack? It was no longer that I got Finn inside and threw him in the bathtub that I heard a crash, a bang, and I looked out the window and his coop was thrown into this fence over here. I might be crazy, but I did put one single egg in the incubator. The joy that I had from having Uni around just far outweighed the pain of losing him and I would do it all over again. We've been talking about me possibly getting a puppy. This is Kaja. She is a Norwegian elk hound. Nothing that be tasty. Aren't you cool, my puppy? <laughs> Kaja is gonna have a little baby chicken to grow up with. I guess that's the end of maple syrup season. Something that should probably take me like 20 minutes to do at this rate. I think it's gonna take me probably an hour. Yeah. It's a lot of walking and running, isn't it? I don't think I ever really loved an animal like I loved Uni. Here's Uni. One of the other things we want to do, kind of an impromptu thing, is create like a little fenced-in area here and let Kaja out and she'll have her own little fenced-in kind of like run in a sense. The little single chick that I have in the incubator is finally starting to hatch. Last year we had stored our potatoes down here to see if storing them under our house would work. I want to plant some peas today. Do you want to be a pet chicken? Yeah. The losses this year have just been overwhelming. The little chicken Finn that I've saved his life probably like, what, four times now, I think. I noticed that he never went up into the roost last night. I knew right away that he was dead. Keep owning company. There was just something always not quite right with that little chicken. I never could really pinpoint what it was. This is just real life. I'm going to focus all my efforts on refining the skills that I already have and becoming really good at those things before tacking on new things. We're going to go down and start our first tilling for our spring wheat. Back in the fall, we sent off a soil sample. Our soil came back pretty acidic. We're going to start tilling up the area where we're going to be planting the potatoes. I'm cutting up my seed potatoes today. I'm going to start laying out my rows for my potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and start planting my potatoes. It's a good life. It's a real good life. We're getting ready to plant our spring wheat. The big project today is to finish the little chicken food plot that I'm doing. I noticed that there was a flock of turkeys where we planted our spring wheat. You know, it would be so amazing if I could actually grow some peas. I've never ever been successful at it before.
Oh, it is definitely not a girl. Oh, it is definitely a boy. I'm pretty excited about that. One of the things that I've been wanting to do is to start introducing Kaja to my pet chicken, Oa. You can smell, but you can't get a bite. She is one of our oldest hens. She's very clearly unwell. Like, she's actually having trouble breathing. I definitely don't know that she's contagious by any means, obviously, but sometimes it's better to be cautious. It seems like I've had more, like, deformities and genetic things or whatever with this breed than the uh, Favarols than you should have, and I don't know. The two hens that I actually need are hiding in the woods. <laughs> we have a short little weather window to get this garden tilled and to start planting. I love when you step outside in the morning and you just instantly know today is gonna be a great day. Me and O are gonna work on planting some leaf lettuce this evening. Wait, wait, <laughs> you can't eat my plant. Be jealous, Kaja. One day, one day, the soil is going to be freaking amazing. I just know it. <laughs> Everything is top priority. I can't believe for the hours that I've spent planting today how little I've actually gotten done. I'm always overly ambitious thinking I'm gonna get like all of these things done and it just never works out. We finally managed to get all the tomatoes planted. I was so, so tired. The future plans for our homestead really relies heavily on this working. It's like a 1960s era baler. It's a little package. Let's see if it keeps doing them that small. But... We can always, yeah. This baler has been in Glenn's family for two generations. This is such a huge deal to us to have our own hay production. Yes. Now that Kaja is a little bit older, I want to start introducing her to closer contact with the chickens. Good job. <sighs> I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me complain about this soil. Glenn was tilling the garden so I could finish planting everything. But while he was doing that, he hit our main gas line. The previous owner who installed all this underground stuff was very negligent, to say the least. We're kind of running up against the clock now. Now we can really upscale things because up to this point, we could only cut enough hay that Glenn could flip by hand. going to be our biggest bailing that we've done so far. It's looking a little sketchy. This is so awesome. <laughs> I'm growing increasingly concerned that the corn that I most recently planted isn't going to germinate. We're going to start a new corn plot. I'm gonna be really happy when this is done today. <laughs> Let's go see the babies. This is something that I've wanted to experience for the longest time. Oa has a pretty severe walking deformity. All that corn is actually up. 17 year old seed. Today is the big day. I'm going to be letting mama and her babies out of their chicken tractor. <laughs> the 
the day, we're getting ready for our goats. <laughs> this is an exciting project that I've wanted to do for probably like the last two years. Breathing this nasty ancient dirt. <laughs> <laughs> ancient dirt. We're trying to mulch this garden very heavy because our clay soil is so bad. Have a visitor. Oh! <laughs> Oa has been in the house much longer than I intended. This has to be all taken out and some of the floor redone as well. It is hot. This is an immense amount of work, obviously. That's a good place to sleep. It was Uni's house, and then when Uni died, it was Finn's house. No. It's Ella's house. Our experimental wheat plot is ready to harvest. What I'm doing looks absolutely crazy, but to me, it's a labor of love. My goal is just to get enough to basically bake a loaf of bread. I'm gonna finally move them into the walk-in chicken coop tonight. I do believe I'm going to be moving more towards a land race garden in the future. I can't change the way that nature works, but I can change the way that I work with nature. I'm learning. Kaja. Harvest season is in full swing. Today is the day. This is our last chance to get a cutting in. Just started sprinkling. We are in full on damage control. It looks like the weather's going to cooperate for us to get this hay finally bailed. Man, it is pouring. Probably gonna need at least double what we got this year to achieve a year's worth of tomato products. We're going to pull all of the hay that got wet, get it out here in the sun and get it drying and see how much of that we can salvage. Look at the size of this guy. Our hazelnut trees have done incredibly well over the last couple years. This year for saving our seed potatoes, we put our potatoes in a bucket, Glenn buried the bucket. These sunflowers we just planted to be used as chicken feed. I was only gonna be in here during the night. We began constructing a corn crib. He's been on his own. So it's kind of a big deal that he has a friend. <laughs> what do you think about that? You have a lady friend. I was alone again. He doesn't have a friend. Oh. 
it's time to start putting the garden to bed. I don't want to make the same mistake that I made with Uni. be some very exciting things happening. You do just like Uni does. The property that we're homesteading on now is not going to allow us to do everything that we want to do. What we would eventually like to do is have more of like a farmstead. Glenn's family has an ancestral homestead of at least five generations. The property is 188 acres. It is going to be a huge undertaking. We've been kind of wanting to get a concrete mixer anyway. Glenn had a really good idea that we could potentially use one to thresh wheat with. I'm sure the amount of corn that we'll put in the corn crib will look pretty insignificant. we will be pursuing more experimentation with wheat moving forward. We're moving in the right direction with everything and slowly gaining the knowledge and skills that it's going to take us to be as independent from the food grid as possible. The first thing on the menu today is to turn our homegrown wheat into our first ever homegrown loaf of bread. Homemade homegrown bread. It's so cool that this is possible. The time has come that I absolutely have to do something about our four youngest cockerels. <laughs> this year started off really rough, but it turned out to be a fantastic year despite losing Uni, which was incredibly, incredibly difficult. And of course, little Finn, but we had a great harvest and we did some new experiments and we learned a lot of things. What's really exciting is what's coming next year. Here comes my chicken. <laughs> it hasn't been easy. Are you okay, Louie? I didn't really see it.